Good morning, welcome back to Entrepreneur Country TV. I'm here with Sherry Roberts, the founder and CEO of The Longest Day This Morning, and I'm looking forward to interviewing her about her business and her expansion of that business globally, and also her thoughts on Malta. Sherry, thanks for joining us here this morning. Good to have you here with us in Malta. So we, you know, we had you here a little while ago on um, Entrepreneur Country TV. Mm -hmm. How's it been going? What, what's happened over the past half year or so? Where to begin? That's always the question. So as any startup, things move a lot quicker than you expect. And uh, the last year, we were really a B2C e-commerce retail play, selling designer furniture online. Um, and this year, and more or less the last six months, we've changed it a little bit of our focus to focus on the interior designer. So it's working with interior designers and architects and property developers um, and furnishing those properties. So we have one side of the business, which is very scalable, which we can sell designer furniture anywhere in the world. And the second part of the business, which we can then sell to more localized interior designers and architects on very large contract projects. And do you find that there's a tension between the two sides of the business or more of a synergy or a little bit of both? I have um, been asked that question many times. Do you have two different businesses? And I said, no, because if I sell one uh, sofa, and I sell 100, the process is kind of the same. It's just the transaction pace is quicker when someone's buying it online versus you have to put together an order. Mm -hmm. But it's the same process. You take the cash, you place the order, and it goes to the customer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now you have a technology background. Um, you've launched actually quite a few things over your technology uh, career, first mm -hmm. to market, seeing things that mm -hmm. were inevitable and making it happen. How does that technology expertise mm -hmm. that you have, how does that actually help you with the longest day? What, what is unique oh. about you running the longest day because you were a technology entrepreneur? I think it's made me quite skeptical because when you're a technologist, you you know you're always looking for who's going to come in quicker and better and faster than you, and everything moves at lightning speed. And when you're doing a startup, of course things move at lightning speed as well. But as a technologist, you're thinking about your business and you're thinking about who else is coming in faster, what else can you do to innovate, is there some kind of pattern or some kind of algorithm that you can apply even to an existing industry like a retail furniture business. There's always ways in which technology plays a part and I think you know, I, I like to say that when I first launched the company, we did shoppable content. And at the time, very few, if hardly any, had shoppable content. And that was because I wasn't afraid to look at coding pages where people could buy and click directly from the pages. So that was kind of my technology background that said, you know, embrace something before people were ready for it. So you're used to being early. You're used yeah. to being an early adopter of uh -huh. things that doesn't frighten you. You're not waiting for it to all be taking the risk out, but you're used to integrating mm -hmm. it and figuring out whether it works for you. That's really mm -hmm. cool. That's probably a lot of lessons for entrepreneurs. Now we're here in Malta today where we broadcast Entrepreneur Country mm -hmm. from today. Um, you have customers who are buying from you all over the world. Have you yeah. had any from Malta? And where do your customers come from? We haven't had um, an end customer purchase directly from Malta. We have had from Cyprus and some other more remote places in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. um, and we have shipped to over 24 countries. Um, and I think that's quite an achievement because we are not in a really established global brand yet, but we have a very big vision to be global, which is why I'm in Malta. Because essentially, I feel that I need to relook at the structure of the company because of Brexit, and Malta provides huge gains for my shareholders on capital gains tax and also corporation tax. Also, there's a huge pool of talent here that have been involved in the internet businesses for a very long time. So you have to look at the economic staffing costs as well as the tax incentives, and also having a base in the EU you and not just in the UK with Brexit could be very important. We also have expansion plans now going actively looking at Asia and having a holding company that's maybe in a, in a global, a better place um, is something I'm definitely evaluating, which is why I'm in Malta. Yeah, I mean, the, Malta is without question one of the best post-Brexit mm -hmm. bases uh, because of the, the English language, uh, the tax advantages, the EU um, status and the mm -hmm. sunshine, of course. Mm -hmm. And I have to introduce you to Dave Darmagen, who runs mm -hmm. Hotjar, which is um, provides a kind of e-commerce mm -hmm. uh, analytics. We, so we use Hotjar. Fantastic. We've well, been using Hotjar for two years. Fantastic. They're the reason we have our heat maps. 
So F fantastic. Yeah. Well, so Hotjar is, mm -hmm. as you know, one of mm -hmm. Malta's finest, hottest tech startups, mm -hmm. and that's great that you already know yes, them. Yes, so I know. There's a it. Mm -hmm. te technology community mm -hmm. here and mm -hmm. so forth. So tell us a little bit more about how you see um, the, the building of a global brand and how you're approaching that. Because um, for the, the technology investors mm -hmm. or the, you know, the big business families that mm -hmm. will be watching Entrepreneur Country TV, many of them have never invested in technology startups. And uh, how do you see the importance of a brand to them? Because they will understand the concept of a brand, mm -hmm. but they may not associate it with technology startups. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't really consider us a tech startup in the sense because we use a, a quite a standardized e-commerce platform which is called Magento. However, what I do see is us being a global brand and how I've done that is I'm not just an online furniture retailer. What I am is probably a global hospitality brand one day. When I launched this company, uh, the purpose of this company was to help people find what they saw in hotels and in home decoration magazines. I originally wanted to launch a hotel, but I went backwards to go forward. So essentially I said, let me create the first online designer furniture brand out there that I can. And this is going back as early as 2010. And eventually I will furnish hotels as well as consumers' homes. And then eventually I might be running those hotels one day. So when I came up with the name, The Longest Stay, it's all about furnishing a home you never want to leave. However, it's also about bringing hotel luxury home. So when you're building a brand and you're doing global, you have to think how you're vertically going to expand your brand. So if you have Armani, you have Armani Casa, you have Armani Hotels. And the same thing I think of is the longest stay retail, the longest stay we will have our own exclusive products, and then the longest stay hotels where you can buy those products. And then, of course, I will use my technology background to kind of fuel any of those initiatives, such as shoppable content, which we were the first to do, and I've got some other things in the mind with that. But I wouldn't say we're a tech company, I'd say we're going to be a global brand um, that has very big aspirations. Wonderful. Now I remember um, the, uh, the white gloves treatment that you give, uh, uh -huh. the idea of delivering in hard to find, locate places and so forth is not a problem. Talk us a little bit about the logistics side. Are there still mountains to cover <laughs> there or do you feel that you have the logistics side down pat? I would never say I've logistics down pat because my business isn't uh, big enough yet to say I've tested every corner of the world and worked with every per partner possible to deliver wherever I need to deliver. So mm -hmm. no, I'm miles away. But do I have logistics companies that can deliver door to door, white glove delivery, um, do it on time? Yes. And have I delivered in many, many countries? Yes. But uh, you know, if you really want to own the business, you should own everything. You should own the supply chain. Mm -hmm. So you know, maybe one day I have my own supply chain. Uh, it's that kind of thinking for me to handle and say I know logistics. What's the best bit about being an entrepreneur? Every day, it's completely unpredictable and your faith in what you do gets tested 24 seven. And I, I don't know if it's an adrenaline rush you get, but I, I have to say it's something that, uh, it's not for everybody, but something that I wouldn't ever change in my life. And the people who work at The Longest Day, your team, mm -hmm. why are they there? That's a question that you have to ask them, uh -huh. but I, I think they believe in the business. I mean, I fundamentally, they look at the competition and even though, you know, we look at our competition and we say, ah, they've got more money than us this week or they've done this and, and, and they say, but we're better. You know, mm -hmm. we know what we're doing. We've got a big vision, mm -hmm. big vision. Mm -hmm. And I think the brand, the longest stay is something everybody agrees is the right brand. Mm -hmm. And they can see how that's going to vertically expand beyond what other companies have kind of uh, nichely focused on. Yeah. Last question, what does your gut tell you about Malta? Is Malta going to be good for you? Malta is good for me anyway because it's sunshine and it's a beautiful place. But I think for business, I think my gut says, you know, definitely pay attention. You know, things are changing in the UK. This place is welcoming, it's friendly, amazing tax structure. Um, lowest unemployment, which tells you that, you know, they're doing something right here. When Greece went under and other countries went under, Malta didn't go under. So I think you, you know, if you're looking to find an alternative base that's EU based, I, I think Malta is a good place, but I also don't want to let my whole secret out to everybody. <laughs> Well, we're, we're happy to have you on Entrepreneur Country TV again. Thanks for sharing your insights. Thanks for having me. And uh, we look forward to seeing The Longest Day go, continue to go from strength to strength. That's Thank Sherry you. Roberts, the founder and CEO of The Longest Day. 
You can uh, see her site here and we look forward to sharing with you more insights from Sherry over time.